Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to make the Adrenaline system from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The player gains Adrenaline based on enemy hits and well-timed dodges. In later videos we're going to use it for abilities like the Spartan Kick. Alright, let's begin. Okay, here's my scene. I have my Spartan character. I can move him around. There are some enemies that chase me and attack me, and I can also attack them and I can dodge their attacks. I can do a simple roll and dodge away. So with this, we have the base for creating our adrenaline system. So let's check out how the code is set up. Over here is the player class. It's pretty simple. There are several states and on update, it runs different logic based on the state. So if the state is normal, which means normal basic movement, he handles the movement, handles the movement by checking for the input and moving the transform. Then it also handles the dodge by checking for the spacebar. And finally, it handles the attack, which it simply tests for the left mouse button click. If so, it looks for a nearby enemy. If he finds one, he damages him and plays the attack animation. Okay, so let's make the adrenaline class. So in here, let's make a new C-sharp script and name it Adrenaline. In here, let's first make it a static class since we only want there to be one Adrenaline system and remove the mono behavior. So the first thing we need is a certain amount for the Adrenaline amount. So a private static int for the amount. Then let's also make a maximum amount. So a private static int for the amount max. And then we're going to divide the adrenaline by a certain number of bars. Essentially, you need to fill up an entire bar before you can actually use it. So let's define a public const int for the amount per bar, which let's say at 25. So essentially, the amount needs to reach at least 25 in order for us to use it. Okay, well, let's make now a public static void init to initialize our adrenaline system. So first set the amount to zero and let's calculate the amount max by defining a certain number of bars. So int for the bar amount and let's say two bars. And we're going to define the amount max, which will be the bar amount multiplied by the amount per bar. So in this case with two bars and each of them having 25, the amount max will be 50. So now for some functions, let's make a public static void add adrenaline and we're going to receive a parameter for the add amount and in here we're simply going to increase it by that amount so amount plus equals add amount and let's make sure we don't go over the max so if amount is bigger than amount max set the amount equals amount max okay and then let's do a debug pop-up with the current amount just so we can see how much we actually have so for that, I'm going to use the CM debug class, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So using CodeMonkey, let's go down here, use the CM debug to create a text pop-up on the mouse position, and that pop-up will simply say the amount. This is just so we can see what is going on inside this class. All right, this is a nice starting point. So let's go into the game handler, which is our main script. And in here, let's make a private void awake. And on the awake, let's initialize the adrenaline system. So adrenaline.init. And here on start, you can see we are setting the camera to follow the player. And we are spawning an enemy every one and a half seconds. Okay, so finally, let's go into the player class. And on the handle attack, when we actually damage an enemy, let's add some adrenaline. So in here, do adrenaline.add adrenaline. And let's give it, let's say, three. Okay, so let's test and we should see the pop-up whenever we attack an enemy. Okay, here I am moving around. If I attack nothing, yep, nothing happens. But if I hit an enemy, yep, there you go. You can see the various pop-ups showing how much adrenaline we have. And if I go up to a maximum of 50, yep, you can see it doesn't go above the maximum. Okay, great. So now let's add some more functions to our adrenaline system. First, let's make a function to calculate the number of filled bars. So make a public static int get fill bar amount. So this is meant to return how many bars we can actually use. So the fill bar is if the amount is bigger than the amount per bar. So in here we are going to return the amount divided by amount per bar. So if we have 25, then this will return one since we have one fill bar. 
However, we have to account for when the amount is in between bars. So in here, let's do a mathf dot floor to int to floor that value. So essentially, if the amount is 30, 30 divided by 25 would essentially be one point something. So we need to floor that number to get a one. And since in here we are dividing two integers together, let's first multiply this by a float to convert it into a float. So if the amount is 30, this will return one. If it is 20, it will return zero. Okay. So let's make another function for removing a film bar. So public static void, remove film bar. And in here, we're simply going to remove the amount by amount per bar and make sure it's not under zero. If it is under zero, set it to zero. And now we can make our code a little less error prone with a function that automatically tests if we can actually remove a bar. So let's make a public static bool try remove film bar. And in here, we're going to first test if the get film bar amount, if it is bigger than one, then we can actually remove it. So then remove the film bar. And once we do, let's return true to say that this function was successful. If not, then return false. So we can call this function whenever, and if we do remove a film bar, it will return true. If not, it will return false. Okay, so our adrenaline system is beginning to take shape. Now let's add a simple indicator to show if we have an adrenaline bar that we can use. So let's head into the editor. In here, I have the player game object. Let me add an inner game object. Let's call it the adrenaline icon and simply give it a sprite renderer with a circle sprite. So this will simply be our indicator to show if we do have a bar that we can use. So let's make it a bit bigger and tint it and it should work. Okay, so this is our indicator in case we do have an adrenaline bar film that we can use. We're going to enable it when we can and disable it when we can't. So by default, let's start with it disabled. Now let's head into the player script. And all the way up here on the awake, let's first grab a reference. So in here, make a private game object for the adrenaline icon game object. And we're going to grab it in here by doing transform.find our adrenaline icon. So using that game object on our update, let's do the adrenaline game object dot set active. And this will only be enabled if we do have an adrenaline bar. So go into the adrenaline class and get the film bar amount and return if it is bigger than or equal to one. So if we have at least one bar filled, then the adrenaline icon will be visible. If not, it will be hidden. And now just for testing, let's go here into the normal update and add a simple if input dot get key down, let's say key code dot E. So if we do press the E, let's try to spend an adrenaline bar. So do an if adrenaline dot try remove the film bar. And if we do successfully remove it, let's spawn a pop-up. So again, using the CM debug, let's fire text pop-up on the mouse position and say bar spent. So this is just for testing to see if the adrenaline system is working. Later on, we're going to remove this code. So to recap, we added some functions to be able to remove and get the number of bars that are currently filled. We add an icon to our player game object and on the player class, we are setting that icon to visible if we do have at least one film bar. If not, it is invisible. And when we press the E key, we try to remove that film bar. And if we do successfully remove it, it says bar spent. If we don't have a film bar, then this function will return false and there will be no pop-up. Okay, so let's test. Okay, so here I am. As you can see, the icon is currently hidden. Now I can attack him. You can see the pop-up saying the adrenaline amount. So it is currently at 24. Now if I hit the next one, yep, there's the icon right there. And now if I press E, yep, there you go, the bar was spent. And again, I can increase and I can go up to the maximum of 50. Now I can press E to spend one bar and yep, there you go. I still can use another one and I use it and there you go. Again, go up and so on. Okay, great. So everything is working perfectly exactly as we wanted so far. Now let's add some bonus adrenaline on kill and also on a successful dodge. So back in our player class, let's go down to the handle attack function. Down here, we are testing the mouse button. We are looking for a close enemy and we are attacking him if we do find him. So we are causing damage to the enemy. And now in here, let's ask if the enemy dot is dead, 
If the enemy is dead, then we have killed him. So let's add a bonus amount. Okay, so that is pretty simple. We add three of adrenaline for every hit. And if we do kill him, we add three on the kill hit. Now for the dodge, let's go all the way up here to see where we are handling the dodge, which we are testing for the space bar. If so, we change the state to dodging, which acts as the animation. We'll look for the keys to get the move direction. And we simply play dodge animation towards that direction and we move him while he's dodging. Okay. So in here, when we begin to dodge, we want to test if we actually dodged any enemies. We don't want to give a bonus adrenaline if you're just spamming the dodge around, but rather we only want to give a bonus if you actually dodged any enemy attack. So the first thing we need is the number of enemies within range. So for that, we need to go into the enemy class and make that function. So in here, let's make a public static list of enemy. And we're going to call this get enemy list in range. We're going to receive a vector three for the position and a float for the range. So in here, let's cycle through all of the enemies. So for each enemy, enemy in the enemy list, let's do a simple test for the distance. So if the vector three dot distance between the position and the enemy dot get position, if that distance is under the range, then the enemy is in range. So in here, we want to add him to a list. So let's make a list of enemy. This will be our return list. And down here, we're going to return our list. And here, if it is in range, then add him to the list. All right, so we now have a nice simple function to get all the enemies within range. So now we can go back into the player. And here, after we begin to dodge, let's grab a list of enemies near the player position. So let's grab a list of enemy for the enemy list which is on the enemy dot get the enemy list in range in range of this position and by a certain amount which we're going to call dodge enemy distance so let's define here a float for dodge enemy distance and let's give it say about 40 okay so we now have a list of enemies within 40 units of our position so now let's cycle for each enemy on this list in the enemy list and now in here, we want to test if the enemy is attacking. So if enemy dot is attacking, if the enemy is attacking, then we do want to give bonus adrenaline. So do adrenaline dot add adrenaline and let's give it also about three. All right, so that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here I am and there's an enemy and I'm gonna hit him. Now I have nine if I hit him again. Yep, there you go. It was two pop-ups exactly on the same position, but you can see that it triggered twice and it gave me the bonus per kill. So like that, 24, and now again, two. Okay, great. Now let me spend the bar, and now let's test dodge. So let one of them get close. Now dodge, and yep, there you go. I got bonus, and there, dodge, and yep. And now if I get a lot of them attacking at once, and I dodge, yep, I have pretty much maxed out. All right, great. So there you have it, we created the adrenaline system as it's used in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We gain adrenaline on enemy hit, per enemy kill, and per successful dodge. In the next video, we're going to use adrenaline to execute a Spartan kick. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.